All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're again talking about universal gravitation, but we are also going to be talking about energy uh, this time. A lot of times energy, this is the maybe the harder part of this chapter, but I'll try to go through it as best I can. All right, so first we have to talk about this gravitational potential energy. We have this gravitational constant here, and let's just look at this. So this is the gravitational potential energy, and we see that we have negative gravitational constant times the mass of the earth, mass of the body, and how far it is from the cent uh, from the earth center. So the part that most students get confused about is this negative here. Okay, why is this negative here? And there's there's many ways I could be talking about this, but I'm just going to briefly just be saying we are now putting the zero line. There's going to be a zero line at this point of what we're going to be calling infinity. We're putting the zero line at infinity. And since it's below that zero line, this is why we have this negative here. Another thing that, uh, another thing that I want to say is uh, the reason why it's zero at the infinity line is because this is the point if, if an object is infinitely far away from another object, it no longer has this gravitational attraction. It no longer has this gravitational pull away from each other. So that's why the potential energy can only be zero at this infinite part when r goes to infinity. Another thing that I just also want to mention here is, you know, we un we know that force of gravity is equal to g, the mass of one object, the mass of the second object, divided by how far they are squared. But this time, since we're trying to find the gravitational potential energy or the work done by gravity, this is also the same as multiplying this by how far it is. So how far it goes, which what, what that means is, and we get rid of r. And this is how we arrive at this formula here. Okay, there's a lot more, and I, I did over I did simplify this a little bit. So if you want to look at more of that, please uh, please do so. Uh, but let's go let let's go into doing problems like this. Okay, so a giant cannon sunk in the earth fires a cannonball. Find the minimum muzzle speed needed to shoot a shell straight up to a height above the earth equal to the radius of the earth. Okay, so we're starting over here, shooting a shell, and then we're ending at this point over here, which is going to be equal to the radius of the Earth. And we want to know, uh, find the minimum muzzle speed needed to shoot it at that point. So with these problems, the good thing is it's usually set up is similarly. We're going to be using conservation of energy to figure this out. So we should think about all of the potential energy at the beginning, all of the kinetic energy at the beginning, and set it up to all of the potential energy at the end, as well as all the kinetic energy at the end. What we should know is at the very beginning here, we are going to have gravitational potential energy. That's going to be negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the mass of the shell times the mass of Earth, which is given to us as 5.97 times 10 to the 24 divided by how far it is uh, from the center of the Earth, which is the radius of the Earth, which is 6.37 times 10 to the 6. And then it's going to be plus 1 half uh, mass of the shell, so the kinetic energy, how fast it's originally going, uh, times the velocity squared. That's what we're looking for, this velocity. And we're going to set this equal, I'm running out of space a little bit here, I'm going to put it up here. We're going to set this equal to negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times mass of the shell again times mass of earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24, divided by how far it is. And now at this point, it's twice as far as it was before. So how I'm going to write this, I'm going to do 2, uh, Whoops, let me do 2 times 6.37 times 10 to the 6. Okay, Oops, let me put another one there. And now we see is we don't have two variables. We don't have mass of the shell, and we don't have velocity. But the good thing is we could get rid of this mass of the shell. And then what we have is we only have one variable missing, which is this velocity. Careful, though, when you put it into your calculator because... Uh, there's so many big numbers, students many times get this wrong. But what we should get for the velocity is around 7,906 meters per second. Okay, 
Uh, let's, uh, let's go on to the next one here. And this next one is a problem you're probably going to see a lot of uh, with this AP Physics C. This is something called escape speed or the escape velocity. And you're going to see this quite a bit um, in, in AP C uh, Physics. So it says, find the escape velocity needed for the shell to escape from the Earth completely. And what that escape velocity means is we want to shoot this thing so far that it never comes back. And the thing is, when something gets shot out, what's going to happen is it's going to go, but eventually gravity is going to kind of bring it back and it's going to come back to Earth. So this time what we want to do is we want to shoot this so fast that it never comes back. So it goes forever, goes to infinity. So let's find what this escape velocity is, because this is going to come up a lot. Okay, so again, think about all the potential energy at the beginning, all the kinetic energy at the beginning, and the potential energy at the end, and the kinetic energy at the end. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, at the very beginning, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of the shell, uh, mass of Earth, which is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 divided by how far it is, and it's just the radius of the Earth uh, at the very beginning. And then this is going to be plus one-half mass of shell, and then I'm going to say velocity escape uh, squared is going to be equal to, and in this case, remember, this shell is going to be going to infinity, so it's going to keep on going forever. And what that means is, let's say, it, I know it's a little bit weird, but let's say infinity is right here. Okay, let's let's kind of define it a little bit. So it's going towards this infinity. What that means is it's going towards that zero line. So that means this gravitational potential energy is going to be zero. And what we should also know is if we're trying to find this escape speed, that means when it reaches this infinite part, that means it's going to be just getting there where also the velocity is zero. So that means this is going to be zero. If that didn't make sense, um, that's okay. You can watch it again. Or just know that this is always how it's going to be set up. At the beginning, there's going to be potential and kinetic. But at the end, there's going to be zero on both sides when it comes to escape speed. So it will always be set up this way. Uh, that being said, since we have this as the negative, uh, we want to bring this to the other side and then just find this escape velocity. The mass cancels out. And we should get the escape velocity around 11,181.4 meters per second. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on. And I'm going to give you guys some practice to see if you guys can do more of this escape velocity. Because you're going to see it quite a bit in this chapter. Hello, Newton. All right, let's look at this. <clears throat> it says, find the escape speed for a rock. Oh, it should be rocket. <laughs> for a rocket on the surface of Mars, the surface of Jupiter. Okay, and maybe pause it right now if you want to try to do this on your own, but I would suggest a BM to do this on your own. So again, the energy at the beginning equals the energy at the end. So we have the gravitational energy at the beginning, and then we have the kinetic energy at the beginning. And then remember, when we're talking about escape velocity, since we're reaching that infinity, this is all going to zero here. So let's see if we can figure this out. Negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Uh, mass of rocket. Mass of Mars, for this case. 6.42 times 10 to the 23. Divided by how far they are. Uh, at the very beginning, this from the surface of Mars. So there's just the radius. 3 point, whoops. 3.39. Times 10 to the 6 plus 1 half mass of the rocket uh, velocity squared. So what's the mass, what's the velocity of the rocket when it tries to escape this? And again, this is all going to zero because it's reaching infinity, meaning potential energy is zero. And it's just going to reach that infinity, so it's going to slow to a stop at that point. Again, mass of rocket cancels out, and then we can find the escape velocity. What we should get is around 5,026.27 meters. 5,026.27 meters per second. Okay. And try practicing it in your calculator on your own um, because uh, many people are getting, do put into the calculator wrong. So get used to being able to put this into your calculator correctly. 
Next one, the surface of Jupiter. So let's look at Jupiter. Jupiter is a lot heavy. I mean, there's a lot more gravity on Jupiter. So we should know that it's going to be a lot harder to get out of Jupiter. So same thing, all the potential energy at the beginning plus all the kinetic energy at the beginning equals zero. But now uh, with Jupiter, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of rocket, mass of Jupiter, 1.9 times 10 to the 27, divided by where it starts off, and this is going to be 6.99 times 10 to the 7. Uh, this is going to be plus 1 half mass of rocket, velocity of the escape velocity, squared, uh, is equal to 0. Okay? Again, we're going to bring this to the other side. Mass cancels out. And then we're going to find this escape velocity. And then we're going to see that it's around 60,216.6 meters per second. So a lot, a lot harder to get out of Jupiter. It's almost like a prison, we could think of it. Because it's really hard to get out of there when there's so much gravity. All right, but I hope that made sense. I wanted to do this twice because escape velocity is something you see quite often in this chapter. All right, let's move on. Uh, so it says a large rock is approaching a small planet at uh, whoop, a small planet at seven million five hundred fourteen thousand meters from the center of the asteroid. The rock has a speed of one hundred thirty six meters per second. At two million eight hundred twenty three thousand meters, the rock has a speed of three hundred ninety two meters per second. What is the mass of the small planet? Okay, so let's look at this. Again, we're going to be thinking about the energy that we know for this problem. Oops, final. Okay, so UG plus kinetic energy is equal to UG plus kinetic energy final. So let's look at this. We have negative 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. Uh, mass of rock, mass of, um, what is that? Mass of planet, divided by how far it is. So at the very beginning, it's this huge number, 7,514,000. Uh, plus one half the mass of the rock. And at the very beginning, it's going 136 meters per second. So then this is going to equal negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Oops, running out of space here. Mass of rock, mass of planet, divided by, uh, at, and at this point, it's 2,823,000 plus one half mass of rock. Uh, and, we're, and we know at this point, it's moving at 392 meters. 392 squared. Sorry, guys, for writing over the drawing. And what we can see is the mass of the rock cancels out like this because it's in every single part of this equation. Mass of the planet doesn't cancel out because it's not on every part of the equation. So we have to do a bit of math now and figure out what this mass of the planet is. Careful when you're putting that into your calculator, guys. There's a lot of big numbers and everything. But what, we, what I would do is I'd bring this over uh, to the other side, and then I'd bring this one half over to this side, okay? And then what we should get is we should get around 4.58 times 10 to the 21 kilograms, okay? We're going to do one more of these, and then we're going to finish. So let's look at this. A huge cannon is on a planet. The cannon fires a shell straight up at 2,000 meters per second. When the shell reaches a height of 1 million meters, what is the shell's speed? Okay, so let's look at this. Again, we're looking at the energy at the beginning and then the energy at the end. So at the very beginning, it's over here. And then we're looking for the energy when it reaches this 1 million meters part. So at the very beginning, there is gravitational potential energy, 0.67 times 10 to the negative 11. We have, uh, let's say, mass of ball times the mass of the planet, which is 3.95 times 10 to the 23. Whoops, ball. Divided by how far it is, and we see the radius is 5, 5 times 10 to the 6. 
and it's gonna be plus one half mass of ball. And at the very beginning, it's going 2,000 meters per second, so 2,000 squared. This is now going to equal, and sorry, I'm gonna make this sideways so I could fit this law. <laughs> at this point over here, we're gonna look at everything. So we have uh, negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of ball, um, mass of planet, 3.95 times 10 to the 23, divided by how far it is now. So that's a little bit complicated. It's going to be this 5 times 10 to the 6, plus, it's a little further out, this 1 million. Okay. And then this is going to be plus 1 half mass of the ball, and we want to see how fast it's going at this point. So velocity squared. Again, good thing is, mass of the ball cancels out. And then we can find what this velocity is. And we should get a velocity around 1,500 meters per second. All right, guys, I hope that made sense. I hope that was good. Uh, watch it again if it was hard, because I do say, I do think this is one of the harder parts of this chapter. Uh, but if it was good for you, great job. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you with the next one. Bye.